Will science ultimately tell us everything there is to know? You know, I find it interesting that as we look at creation, we find a lot of things that are rather mysterious, like dark matter and dark energy, that uh, just really cause us to scratch our heads and figure out what's going on. Well, today I'm joined by Michael Gillen, and we're going to explore what do we do with this dark energy and dark matter <laughs> stuff? What does it really mean? <laughs> Michael, it's good to have you here today. I love that question. I love it. I love being here with you, Jeff. Yeah. You know, it is. It's just kind of funny. I mean, you can't accuse scientists of being creative in their names at some <laughs> level. But, uh, you know, this idea of dark matter and dark energy, it's got, yeah. it, it's intriguing just yeah, because there's a lot of stuff we don't understand. Yeah, yeah. But ultimately, it's pointing to things that are so far beyond what we yeah. might expect. Yeah. As a scientist, what are we what are we doing? What's what's going on there? You know, when you mention dark matter, let's start there. Um, it takes me back to my grad student days at Cornell. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't really call it dark matter back then. We called it the missing mass problem. Okay. That's that's how that's how that observation was framed. We would look out into deep space, we'd see the galaxies, you know, twirling around. And we did a we used something called the virial theorem mm -hmm. to figure out how fast it should be spinning around. And lo and behold, it wasn't spinning at the rate we expected it, given the amount of matter we saw right, in the yeah. galaxy. Uh, it implied that the spin rate implied that there should be much more matter there than mm -hmm. we're seeing. And so hence the missing mass problem. People like Zwicky and others, uh, you know, were were very involved in trying to solve it. Well, we we haven't solved it after all these years. And <laughs> Uh, you know, I, it was some years ago that I was in grad school, so yeah. you would have thought that by now um, we would have solved it. We haven't, but it's now called the, uh, the now it's called dark matter. Right. Okay, so they're. The, I can't the, say either of those names are particularly. I uh, know, I know. <laughs> it, it, basically, they both e express the kind of a shrug, like yeah. from science, saying, "Well, it appears as there's there's more matter out there than we're able to see with our telescopes mm -hmm. and other observational techniques." But we don't know if that's the case or whether our equations are just wrong and they're, right. they're, they're uh, causing us to expect there to be more matter than there actually is. So we're in a bind either mm -hmm. way, and it's exciting. Yeah. It's an exciting problem. Hey, listen, in science, problems like that are job security, okay? They, they, <laughs> they shouldn't rattle us and they right. shouldn't rattle other people. The universe is a very mysterious place. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Then the other more recent innovation is this, or observation is this uh, uh, dark energy. Right. I remember being at ABC News when I was a, I was the science correspondent there, as you know, for about 14 years. Mm -hmm. I did Good Morning America, Nightline, and all those shows. And I remember when that story broke about the accelerating universe. And I remember I was I think I was still teaching at Harvard, and so I interviewed Bob Kirshner, who was very involved in that. There, mm -hmm. he was an astronomer, and. Uh, he was very excited. Oh my gosh, this is one of the greatest <laughs> discoveries. The universe is actually accelerating. It's not just expanding, but it's accelerating as it's expanding, which is completely what we didn't expect, right? Because right. in the standard Big Bang theory, um, you know, the universe expands, but it should be slowed down by the pull of gravity, mm -hmm. or at least maybe just it keeps expanding forever because there's a, a, a perfect balance between the outward forces and the, and the force of gravity. But the idea that the universe is actually accelerating, defying gravity was something quite remarkable. So what did we do? Well, there has to be something there to accelerate it. Right. Yeah. Something is pushing the accelerator. What is it? Well, let's call it dark energy. Mm -hmm. There's something there that we don't see that's causing the acceleration. So that's where we're at right now. We have this really profound, these profound problems of dark matter and dark energy. And, and to be honest, and you know, because you're, you're a scientist as well, uh, and an observationalist is, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a theorist, you're an observationalist, so you of all people know um, this is a huge thing because now mm -hmm. the, the estimates are, what, that 95% of the physical universe, the right, physical right, yeah. universe, right, that's matter and energy, 95% of it is invisible to us, mm -hmm. <laughs> which yeah. means, which let's follow what this means, which means that our entire discipline of astronomy, of physics, of everything we call science, the entire schmageggy is based on just observing 5% mm -hmm. of the physical universe. Wow. I mean, you know, can you that, imagine living long <laughs> enough that if we do in, unveil that other 95%, how will that change our astronomy? Mm -hmm. How will that change our physics? It's pretty mind-boggling. You know, it, it really is. And there's <clears> this <throat> sense that we kind of 
kind of have everything sorted out. We've got all the problems figured out, if you will. But, you know, I think your, your comment is intriguing there that where we find these problems, that's what's actually fun and fascinating. That's the fun. But there's also the, we just see that the creation is much bigger and more bizarre and more creative than we ever would have thought. Which is interesting because that's what the Bible has said all along, right? The Bi Bible has said all along that, uh, you know, there, there are principalities and there are forces at work beyond the visible universe. And so I find it rather intriguing that as science chugs along in its a, a effort to understand the universe, it's actually coming into greater and greater conformity with this truism that is espoused by the Bible, not less so. That's a big deal.